Hello everyone, welcome to SimuVision. I'm Eric, a SimuVision pilot. In this video, we will be talking about 5 simple tips to get correct viewing proportions using 3 monitors on your flight simulator. This is a must watch video for those who have a 3 monitor setup like ours but are struggling to get correct proportions and immersive experience. Most simmers use only one monitor. This is how it looks. Pretty simple and easy for the computer. However, it lacks the immersive experience. Now look at this setup. With three monitors, you feel more immersed into the sim as if you're really inside the plane's cockpit. In this video, we are aiming to further improve the realism of your three monitor setup which is also backed up by our real flying experiences. Just a quick disclaimer, our tips don't need any mathematical calculations. It is simply based on natural, comfortable visual proportions and experiences which are easy to set by anyone. Settings may differ based on your graphics card settings. These settings are based on all three monitors with the standard Full HD 1920 by 1080 resolution. All these settings on X-Plane 11 will be the same on X-Plane 12 as well. In case you need a more in-depth calculations regarding the setup, you can find some other online videos for it. Before we start with our 5 tips, let's learn how to set up three monitors. Now, I'm assuming that you already have set up the monitors on Windows. If not, there are some videos regarding that on YouTube. You can see one of them. But for right now, we are going to set up the three monitors on X-Plane. So let's begin. First, we would recommend you to start a flight because we would find it way easier to see all the changes you make in real time for your proportions. After you're loaded in, navigate to the top right corner of the screen. To the sliders icon and click it. This is the settings window. On the top of the window click the graphics tab. This will show you all the graphics settings in the sim. Scroll down to the bottom of the menu to the monitor configuration section. This is where we will add the monitors. The window inside this will show you the configuration of your monitors in Windows. By clicking the drop down menu beside the monitor's name you can choose to make it a full screen simulator, instructor operating station, or a 2D panel only. We would choose the full screen simulator option because we want to make these monitors wrap around us. Once you click it, you will notice that the monitor will show the simulator. Right under that setting, you have the resolution. Make sure this is set according to your monitor's specs. Ours is 1920 by 1080. Make sure all the monitors are on the same resolution. Under that, we have the visual settings. Opening the drop down menu will allow you to adjust if you want to, all the monitors to show a 2D panel, scenery only, or a 3D copy, or just a HUD. These settings will affect all of the monitors as well. Allow windshield effects just allows if you want the effects to run or not. Closing this, the next settings is the FOV. You can change the FOV or field of view of the monitor. You can check under that if you want a non-proportional field of view, but we won't recommend that. Next, the visual offsets. This is the most important setting in x to get a correct, realistic proportion. By using these offsets, you can adjust the lateral, vertical and roll of the monitor. We have provided our own offsets down in the description below and you can copy them and try it out. But honestly, we would recommend you to spend some time and understand the system and create a custom offsets for yourself. Under that, you have the flat fractional offset. We don't recommend you using this. Now let's begin with the tips. Surprisingly, our first tip doesn't even start in the sim. Before we get to any software based solutions, you have to keep the monitors physically aligned. 
There's no point adjusting settings in X-Plane when you don't even have your monitors aligned. With having aligned monitors, you're not only using more of the monitor screen to show what's important, but also making it look more professional. This will take some time to do depending on your monitors and how you have them set up. However, to further optimize your time, go down to the description of this video and download for free our 3 monitor alignment wallpaper. This will drastically decrease extra time that you will spend trying to eyeball the alignment and get you flying as soon as possible. Now the second tip is to keep the cockpit proportions perfect. For example, use an instrument that is in the center of both monitors' vessels as a reference. Now this instrument acts like a guideline for you to align on. By nudging left or right on the lateral rotation offset, you can see the instrument is smoothly moving between two monitors with no gaps or clipping. A quick note, make sure you don't consider the vessels wall aligning. By using these techniques, you should get a perfectly aligned sim. The third tip is to use outside references. In some scenarios, the cockpit instruments might be giving an illusion as if they're perfectly aligned. While outside the cockpit, well, that looks like a complete mess. To solve this problem, use a single object that is independent and is not blending with another. Now use this object as your guideline, and by adjusting the lateral and roll rotation offsets, you will be able to get a perfectly aligned sim. Now that said, don't make this common mistake. Some people tend to spend so much time adjusting objects outside that they ruin this cockpit alignment. This is because of something called the point of intersection in math. The point of intersection is where two lines meet. You can imagine these lines being the monitor's edges. The monitor's edges never match up perfectly endlessly. There's only a specific spot where both edges line up perfectly, giving a feeling that it's aligned. No matter how well you would align your sim, after a certain distance, objects won't be proportionally correct. So just get a good middle ground. On to our fourth tip. Have a consistent FOV on all your monitors. Having the same field of view will ensure the most realistic sim you would have. Let me explain. In real life, when you look left or right, you won't be shifting the amount that you can see. Instead, you're just changing the viewing angle. By having an inconsistent FOV, you're doing the opposite of that. Every time you would turn right or left, you would see an altered angle. In simple words, you are seeing more than you should. Once you have an FOV that you like, make sure the rest of your monitors are set to that exactly. And now to our final tip. Don't overdo your FOV. Use a realistic FOV margin. When we went to our Cessna flights, which if you haven't watched that video, we highly recommend you to watch that video. It is linked down in the description. We observed and recorded how much you could see on average in a Cessna and tried to remake that in X-Plane. The final output, a sim that looks very realistic. We used exactly 42.69 degrees. I know, very accurate figure, right? And we found that to be very, very accurate and giving a very realistic perspective. In our previous versions of the sim, you can see that the FOV was very high. To the untrained eye, it looks very impressive. However, when you sit in a real Cessna, it does not look like that at all. After setting your FOV, you might realize that even with three monitors, you still might not be able to see as much. Three monitor setups is ideal, but for a more immersive experience, we would suggest for you to go for a five monitor setup. Perfect, if you follow these five simple tips, you just made a very realistic sim, and you didn't even need to use math. But we would again stress, don't be picky if you see something not quite aligned far away. You already learned about the point of intersection. You understand that you can never get a perfectly aligned sim. Just finding a good middle ground would be enough. 
Well, that's all for today. Thank you everyone for watching this video. We hope you learned something new and please feel free to ask us any questions. And if you haven't, please like, share and subscribe. Thank you and happy flying.